Hi, I am Dr. Sharda Ramdas, Professor in the Department of Food Service Management and Dietetics in Avinash University, Coimbatore. Hope the previous session on childhood obesity helped you to understand the causes, risks, treatment and preventive measures for childhood obesity. In relation to this, the last aspect to be known is how to maintain body fat and body mass index. Let us now see the objectives of this module. After going through this, you will be able to explain healthy weight, overweight and obesity. Understand the factors contribute to a healthy weight, risk factors associated with obesity and follow healthy eating plan and healthy weight tools. Why healthy weight is important? Reaching and maintaining a healthy weight can help to prevent and control many diseases and conditions. If the person is overweight or obese, the person are at higher risk of developing serious health problems, including heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, gallstones, breathing problems, and certain cancers. That is why maintaining a healthy weight is so important. It helps to lower your risk for developing these problems, helps to feel good, and gives more energy to enjoy life. What is overweight and obesity? According to WHO, overweight and obesity are defined as abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that may impair health. Overweight is having extra body weight from muscle, bone, fat or water. Obesity is having a high amount of extra body fat. Body mass index that is BMI is a useful measure of overweight and obesity. According to Nicolaides 2013, obesity and overweight across the lifespan is an important public health issue. It has been suggested that the track from childhood and adolescence to adulthood and are linked to many other diseases. What factors contribute to a person's weight? Look at the slide. It states that environment, lack of physical activity, restriction of sedentary behavior, family history and genetics, metabolism, socioeconomic status, psychological factors and behavior or habits that determine the individual's body weight. What do you know about energy balance? The basic components of energy balance include energy intake, energy expenditure and energy storage. Energy balance is important for maintaining a healthy weight. The amount of energy or calories you get from food and drinks, that is energy in, is balanced with energy your body uses for breathing, digesting and being physically active, that is energy out. The amount of energy in and energy out over time is equal to weight stays the same, that is energy balance. More energy in than out over time is weight gain. More energy out than in over time is weight loss. To maintain a healthy weight, energy in and out do not have to balance exactly every day. It is a balance over time that helps to maintain a healthy weight. How will you assess health risk? Many reference methods are able to estimate body composition accurately at the individual level. Multi-compartment models, underwater weighing, air displacement plethysmography, labeled water techniques, and dual energy X-ray absorptiometry are the most reliable methods to obtain accurate measures of total body fat. Computed tomography and magnetic resonance imaging have been also shown to provide information about body fat distribution. Nowadays, reference methods are still not enough suitable for field and clinical use. 
Therefore, anthropometry and bioelectrical impedance are the most widely used methods when population size is big, as per Rodriguez et al. 2004. Now, I will explain the various assessment methods in detail. First, let us see hydrostatic weighing. It also referred to as underwater weighing or hydrostatic body composition analysis or hydrodensitometry. It is a technique for measuring the mass per unit volume of a patient's body. Next, air displacement, plethysmography, body composition. The BOD POD is an air displacement, plethysmography that uses whole body densitometry to determine body composition, that is, fat versus lean. Similar in principle to underwater weighing, the BOD POD measures body mass using a very precise scale and volume by sitting inside the BOD POD. Next, dual energy X ray absorptiometry. It is abbreviated as DXA or formerly it is known as DXA DEXA. It is a technique used to measure bone mineral density that is abbreviated as BMD. Computed tomography, which is termed as CT, it is also called computerized tomography and computerized axial tomography that is CAT. The body fat measurement by computed tomography CT presents volume of body fat quantitatively at a specific region such as subcutaneous and abdominal fats. Next, we will see MRI scan. It is an X-ray based method in which a magnetic field excites water and fat molecules in the body, producing a measurable signal. A person lies within the magnet as a computer scans the body. High quality images shows the amount of fat and where it is distributed. Next is bioelectrical impedance. It actually determines the electrical impedance or opposition to the flow of an electric current through body tissues which can then be used to calculate an estimate of total body water that is abbreviated as TBW. The TBW can be used to estimate fat-free body mass and by difference with body fat and body weight. Next, we can study anthropometry methods. The first one, skin fold measurement. A caliper is used to measure the folds of skin measurement. The measurements are used in equations that link the thickness of skin folds to percent body fat calculations made from more precise experiments. Next, body mass index, that is BMI. I think all of you are familiar with BMI. It is a simple index of weight for height that is commonly used to classify overweight and obesity in adults. It is calculated from height and weight. BMI is an estimate of body fat and a good gauge of risk for diseases that can occur with more body fat. The higher the BMI, the higher risk for getting certain diseases such as heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, gallstones, breathing problems and certain cancers. It is defined as a person's weight in kilograms divided by the square of his or her height in meters, that is kilogram per meter square. The WHO definition is BMI greater than or equal to 25 is overweight. BMI greater than or equal to 30 is obesity. BMI provides the most useful population level measure of overweight and obesity as it is the same for both sexes and for all ages of adults. However, it should be considered a rough guide because it may not correspond to the same degree of fatness 
in different individuals. Although BMI can be used for most men and women, it has some limitations. It may overestimate body fat in athletes and others who have a muscular build. It may underestimate body fat in older persons and others who have lost muscle. Next is weight circumference. It also helps to screen the health risks associated with overweight and obesity. If most of the fat is around the waist rather than at the hips, the person is at a higher risk for heart disease and type 2 diabetes. This risk goes up with the waist size that is greater than 35 inches for women or greater than 40 inches for men. Next, waist to hip ratio, it is known as WHR. It is the ratio of the circumference of the waist to that of the hips. This is calculated as waist measurement divided by hip measurement. Next, body fat percentage. It is influenced by age. Older men require more body fat to remain healthy. Look at this table. Men between the ages of 20 to 29 should be considered to have normal body fat between 16 and 20 percent. For men 30 to 39 years, the range is 19 to 22 percent. For men 40 to 49, the range is 21 to 24 percent and 20 to 26 percent for men in the age group of 50 and 59 years. Men over 60 years should have a 23 percent to 26 percent of body fat percentage. Because of the prevalence of obesity, many people are concerned about their appearance and body fat percentage. Some wonder if they have a normal or ideal body fat percentage. Knowing the average body fat percentage can give a good overview of health. Coming to women, if they have a higher body fat percentage than men, it is because it is necessary for estrogen production and childbearing. Women can have a body fat percentage 10% higher than a man of the same age. You can refer the body fat chart for further details. Having a normal body fat percentage is vital to maintaining a healthy lifestyle. The high percentage of body fat means low fitness and increased risk of heart disease, diabetes and cancer. However, Having too little body fat carries similar health risk. Now let us see risk factors associated with obesity. High blood pressure, it is nothing but hypertension. High LDL cholesterol, we name it as bad cholesterol. Low HDL cholesterol, that is good cholesterol. High triglycerides, high blood glucose family history of premature heart disease, physical inactivity, and cigarette smoking. How to control weight? The most effective and successful way of controlling or losing weight is by setting the right goals and focusing on lifestyle changes such as following a healthy eating plan, watching portion sizes, being physically active and reducing sedentary time. Let us discuss behaviors that will help to lose weight and maintain it, setting the right goals. Setting the right goals is an important first step. It should be specific, attainable or doable and forgiving. Exercise more is a great goal but it is not specific. Walk 5 miles every day is specific but not measurable. Walk 
30 minutes every day is more attainable but not possible every day. So, walk 30 minutes 5 days each week is specific, doable and forgiving. In short, it is a great goal. Second, after setting the goal, based on the concept that nothing succeeds like success, have consecutive goals that move you ahead in small steps to reach a distant point and consecutive rewards keep the overall effort invigorated. Next is reward success. Do you know how? If you are losing weight progressively, you can't maintain desirable weight. In the long run, it prevents the risk of non-communicable diseases and the medical expenses. This is the success and reward of attaining healthy life and saving money for future. Next, balance your food checkbook. Self-monitoring refers to observing and recording some aspects of behavior. Regular monitoring is essential to know how individuals are losing weight to maintain a desirable weight throughout their life. The record alone is not sufficient, but graphical presentation will be more effective than a list of weight to understand the trend of improvement. So, long term or continuous Self-monitoring often results in successful weight management efforts. Get the fullness message. Changing the way an individual go about eating can make it easier to eat less without feeling deprived. Eating slowly will help to feel satisfied. Eating lots of vegetables and fruits can make feel fuller. Or use smaller plates so that moderate portions do not appear too small. Next, eat right. To lose weight, it is important to make lifestyle changes with the focus on reducing calories from food and beverages, a healthy eating plan and portion control. Over time, these changes will become part of everyday routine. So, avoid smoking, drinking alcohol and frequent intrusion of coffee or tea which tend to raise the level of calorie intake. Next, healthy eating plan. The healthy eating plan gives an individual body the nutrient it needs every day while staying within daily calorie goal for weight loss. The healthy eating plan also will lower the risk for heart disease and other health condition. A healthy eating plan emphasizes vegetables, fruits, whole grains and fat-free or low-fat dairy products. Next include lean meats, poultry, fish for non-vegetarians. For vegetarians, you can include beans, nuts. Next, limit saturated and trans fats sodium and added sugars. Control portion size. In eating plan, calorie plays a role. To lose weight, most people need to reduce the number of calories they get from food and beverages, that is energy in, and increase their physical activity to energy out. For a weight loss of half a kilogram per week, daily intake should be reduced by 500 to 750 kilocalories. Avoid drinking alcohol and junk foods which adds calories. In general, eating plants that contain 1200 to 1500 kilocalories each day will help most women lose weight safely. Eating plants that contain 1500 to 1800 kilocalories each day are suitable for men and for women who weigh more or who exercise regularly. Next, portions and servings. Do you know the difference between these two? Portion refers to the quantity of food provided for each portion at a meal. 
A portion is the amount of food that choose to eat for a meal or snack. It can be big or small. In a food service outlet or in a restaurant, it indicates the portion size that varies with the type of outlet, service and cost. In addition, portion also means divide and distribute something. Coming to serving, it is a measured amount of food or drink such as one slice of bread or one cup or 150 ml of milk. Many foods that come as a single portion actually contain multiple servings. The nutrition facts labeled on packaged foods on the back of the cans or side of the boxes indicates the number of servings in the container. So, now you can differentiate the portion from serving. Healthy eating plan also states that daily food and activity diary need to be maintained. Keeping a record of daily food intake will help to stay on track when trying to lose weight or maintain a healthy weight and activity levels. It also will give doctor or healthcare provider a quick way to check the person's progress. Next plan is be physically active. Being physically active and eating fewer calories will help to lose weight and keep the weight off over time. People who want to lose a large amount of weight, more than 5% of their body weight, and people who want to keep off the weight that they have lost, may need to be physically active for more than 300 minutes of moderate intensity activity each week. Continuously, the person cannot work and to break the monotony and to reduce or to relieve from stress, the person can opt for walking, cycling or jogging, thus makes an individual physically active. You can be active by following aerobic exercise also, since it improves your heart and lungs health and also reduces amount of visceral fat and unhealthy fat. To conclude this session, I wish to say that use the BMI to assess overweight and obesity and estimate relative risk of disease compared to normal weight. The waist circumference should be used to assess abdominal fat content. The initial goal of weight loss therapy should be to reduce body weight by about 10% from baseline with success and if warranted, further weight loss can be attempted. Low calorie diet, that is LCD, are preferable for weight loss in overweight and obese persons. Reducing fat as part of an LCD is a practical way to reduce calories. Reducing dietary fat alone without reducing calories is not sufficient for weight loss. However, reducing dietary fat Along with reducing dietary carbohydrate can help reduce calories. Avoid eating three supersized portion of meals. Instead, follow frequent small size portion of meals. Physical activity should be part of the comprehensive weight loss therapy and weight control program because it moderately contributes to weight loss in overweight and obese adults and may decrease abdominal fat and increase cardiorespiratory fitness and may help with maintenance of weight loss. Comprehensive weight loss and weight maintenance therapy should employ low calorie diet, increased physical activity and behavior therapy, which should be continued indefinitely. A weight maintenance program should be a priority after the initial six months of weight loss therapy. So, by listening to this session, you are very clear on the risk of being overweight and obesity. You will also realize now the need for comprehensive approach such as diet therapy, physical activity and behavioral therapy for a healthy life. I hope 
that you can adhere to these principles in your daily routine with apprehension. Thank you for patiently watching this session. Goodbye to all the listeners.